Hi, this is Jeff Byers. This is Mailbox Low Poly Modeling Video 2. Alright, now that we have it on a layer, let's go ahead and uh, reference that layer so we can't select it accidentally. Just remember that you have it referenced, so if you want to select them and delete them or move, move them, make sure that you remember that they're on a layer and referenced. Alright, so let's go ahead and start modeling as soon as possible. Um, let's see what direction is this facing. Um, the Z, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and um, first thing I like to do is turn off all the interactive creation uh, junk on here. And we're also going to make sure primitives, nerves primitives, turn that off as well. Not that we'll be using nerves primitives, maybe sometime down the road we will. Um, let's go and create a uh, a cube. Let's get started. We'll go to the side view and we'll go ahead and scale that up a bit. And uh, just kind of get, just rough it out. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to select vertex and marquee select and bring it down. All right. We're going to create a a cylinder. We want eight sides that goes around, so we'll do 16. Cylinder, we're going to do 16 here. There we go. And we will cut it in half. So let's go ahead and move that up. And let's go ahead and rotate this. I'm going to turn my discrete rotate on again if I don't have it on. Okay, and we'll rotate this. And we will rotate it this way as well. There we go. And we will cut the top off. So I'm going to go ahead or cut the bottom off like this. Now I don't see this very well, even though I have that x ray on. I'm going to turn that reference off a second and let me move this on the other side. That happens sometimes where you got your image plane, you just need to move it over on this side. Let's go ahead and do that. And now I can see my objects fairly well. Another little tip is that we can use X-ray. So I can go into shading and use X-ray, turn X-ray on so I can see my objects in here through to the back. Okay. That's something you can do as well. You can turn that off and on right here if you want to. Okay, so I'll turn it on. So you can see. All right, so let's take this uh, cylinder and let's scale that up and move that down. And let's just kind of scale it up and get it as close as we can. Now I've got it that way. Let's go ahead and scale it this way a bit. There we go. Let's move it. Let's kind of center it on here. Looks like I squashed it a little bit too much, so let's go ahead and pull that back up again. There we go. That looks pretty decent. There we go. Let's move that down a bit. There we go. Okay. We'll take this part and we'll select these vertices. Move that up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, from the top view, get this matching pretty close I'm going to go ahead and turn off the grid so I can see it a little bit better move that over a little bit I can nudge this by holding down the Alt and the arrow. Use the arrow key, up and down keys to nudge it. Let's get that pretty close. Okay. Alright. That's our first steps. The bottom's taken off. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of these pieces on uh, through here. So I'm going to go ahead and select these guys right here. 
You can also use the paint tool. Go ahead and close that. This guy right here to select edges if you want to. Let's go to edge. And there we go. You can select edges. It doesn't work very good with edges, unfortunately. That's kind of weird. There we go. And the brush size, hold the B key down, maybe that'll help a little bit. There we go. With faces, it does a really good job. Maybe the brush size was too small. Okay. Let's go ahead and do edit mesh and delete edge and vertex. There we go. We're going to create our own edges going across. So I'm going to go in here and go to edit mesh. Interactive split, interactive split tool, reset it, and we're going to start over here to over here. Let's make sure it snaps really good. Okay, hit enter. Hit the G key, and sometimes that doesn't, that doesn't work, so we'll go back to interactive split tool. And I'm not sure, it's a kind of a glitch with Maya, but if I do it again now, it works. There we go. Alright, and let's go over here. Okay, and now we're going to place the top on to the bottom and the safest way to do that so they match up perfectly is to take and click a vertex hit the W key and hit the V key and go ahead and snap it down Let's go ahead and uh, select both of these pieces. Let's combine. Mesh combine. And let's go ahead and merge the vertices. Now, they do have a, a tool that merges the vertices um, as you're moving. So you can use that as well. Okay, we got the merge vertex tool right there. Alright, so let's go ahead and do it after, do it post. We'll do that right now. And click merge, so that took care of it. Make sure you have your heads up display on for poly count. Let's go in here and finesse uh, vertices if we need to. This is too far down, so let's move that up a bit. There we go, like that. Looks good so far. Let's go to the front view. Take a look at that. That is a little wide, but I am thinking that's okay. Let me have to squeeze that in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and scale that in just a bit. Okay, there we go. Just needs to be close. Uh, right, because it's, it's angled a little bit. That's going to throw you off. Okay. All right. Next thing we're going to do, um, we're going to go ahead and create the side view. Create this piece right here. 